Hello, and welcome to our Women's History Month series, Spotlighting Women in Racing. In this series, we're inviting social innovators, industry experts, and trailblazers to share their experiences and insights as we reflect on the past and collaborate to inspire the next generation. I'm Matt Anderson, Curator of Transportation at the Henry Ford, and today it is my pleasure to be joined by Beth Peretta, who is CEO and Team Principal at Peretta Autosport. Beth, welcome. Thanks so much. I'm so happy to be here to celebrate Women's History Month. Well, let's start with the uh, the basic questions. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do with Peretta Autosport. Absolutely. So I am the team principal and the owner of a professional racing team that is currently racing in the IndyCar series. My background is in automotive and racing in a professional working for car companies. I worked for Fiat Chrysler and before that I worked for Aston Martin. So I've come to the, the racing uh, discipline uh, from the corporate path. And realistically, I own a small business. So it's a professional race team, but it's otherwise a small business with a very public facing uh, um, element to it where, for instance, this past year in 2021, we ran in the Indy 500. So although our day-to-day operations are very small, on one very important Sunday in May, there were uh, about 7 million people watching what we do. So that gives you a little bit of the balance of uh, the difference between a day like today where I get to talk to you or the day when there are many, many eyes upon us. Well, obviously for uh, Women's History Month, we're spotlighting trailblazers like yourself, but we're also looking at other pioneering women in motorsport. Uh, people like Denise McCluggage, the, the journalist and driver who is being inducted into the Motorsport Hall of Fame this year. Uh, also people who are featured in our, our Racing in America Driven to Win exhibit. Uh, drivers like Vicki Wood, a pioneering female driver in NASCAR who set records using one of the Team Key Copper cars like our 56 Chrysler 300B. Uh, people like Janet Guthrie, we have her glove in the exhibit, the glove that she wore in 1977 when she became the first woman to compete in the Indianapolis 500 as a driver. And then also uh, Lynn St. James, who in 1992 was Rookie of the Year at Indy and of course returned to race there several more times. We have uh, the suit and the helmet that she wore in that competition in addition to her Rookie of the Year award trophy. And I wonder if there are women who inspired you in your career, whether it's those women or, or perhaps others. I think when I was younger, I wouldn't have uh, uh, connected, although I saw those women and I saw, you know, Janet, I, mean, I was really young when she, when she qualified, but I remember when Lynn was ra- racing and, and Sarah Fisher and other people in IndyCar racing after that. And um, although I saw them because they're drivers, I appreciated them, but I didn't aspire to be a racing driver. So I don't think that they were particular role models for me. In many ways, I probably gain a lot from them now because I can relate to their struggle differently because of the path that I've taken. But as a kid, there wasn't a a very obvious or direct role model. In fact, I was just uh, an automotive and racing fan. I was the kid sitting on the hill at the racetrack or buying the ticket, sitting in the stands or watching it on TV. And I didn't connect that passion and hobby and love for it to something that I could do for a living. It wasn't my family's experience. It wasn't my parents' experience. So it wasn't something that they even could have nurtured in me. And so I didn't really make those connections. So like an obvious role model in that vein didn't really exist. Now, as time has gone on and I've done a lot more research, there are people that I look back. I mean, I used to always read Denise McLuggage's writing. She wrote an auto week. I would always, I would be happy when I'd see her writing or um, Dean Jennings who, you know, wrote for automobile magazine. And yes, that would resonate with me differently because I knew it was a woman writer, um, but I didn't want to be an automotive journalist. So it's it's just kind of like, you know, they, it's, it, it didn't, it didn't um, inspire me in the way that would seem obvious. But I will say in time, I've come to um, enjoy learning about people that have had similar, very similar struggle, struggles. There's a woman called Lucy Shell, who's an American who actually was the first woman to own a Grand Prix team, a Formula One racing team in the late 1930s. And she had a team with Delahaye, a French manufacturer, and she was basically the factory work team. Um, And she, I just read this book uh, that profiles her endeavor, it's called Faster, and I highly recommend it. Um, Because it's these little stories that we didn't, you might not be familiar with. And of course, they can also have parallels to today, which is always what makes them interesting. And then um, when you look also for the history of, let's say, the Indy 500, women weren't allowed in the paddock until about Janet Guthrie, like 1977. And so, again, there weren't a lot of visible examples. But what's funny is, 
the first uh, woman to be a winning team owner actually happened in 1929. And it was a lady called Maud Yeagle. But because women were not allowed to be in the paddock or be official entrance, she had to use her initials. And I think in the beginning, they might not have even known that, you know, it was a woman behind the entry. Um, and, and as I say, Lucy Shell, who then has this Formula One team running around in Europe, they then ran the Indy 500 in 1940. So there are a few, but the stories weren't elevated. And um, it, it's interesting. And I, I'm happy that maybe more of those stories are, are being told. And now maybe our endeavor will be somebody else's inspiration. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, throughout the Henry Ford's uh, Driven to Win Racing in America exhibit, we talk about our, our Model I curriculum, where we focus on the habits and actions of innovators. Now, obviously, you're an innovator, you're a leader, you're inspiring and mentoring uh, women and young girls who want to go into careers in STEM or in motorsport. And, and I wonder if you might share some of the initiatives you're currently involved with right now, and maybe even talk about what drives you to support and encourage the next generation. Absolutely. So what's unique about my team is it's, it's, we say women forward. My team is the majority women. We, it's about 70% women, which is, has never happened before. And it was kind of unheard of at the top levels of racing of professional motorsport, especially in the Indy 500. So we use the Indy 500 because it's a very big event. And uh, the first Indy 500 was in 1911. And so we ran last year, 2021. So it was 110 years. The you know, it was actually the 105th running because the, the uh, race didn't run for uh, about five years during World War II. But um, in 110 years, there had never been a majority woman's team. So the, the purpose of the team is to inspire uh, young women to maybe pursue non-traditional careers, maybe see, you know, a lot of the things that the, the skill sets that we use on a race team, both on the technical side, the engineering side, the mechanic side, and let's, let's be honest, even the business side, these are things that are transferable skills. So you can work on this professional sports team and then take these skills and work elsewhere. We have an engineer on our team, a performance engineer, who uh, used to work at Boeing. She, was, she is a wind tunnel. She does wind tunnel testing for race cars now, but she used to work for Boeing. So these are very transferable skills. So a lot of what we're doing with the team is, uh, the, I think sometimes the even more exciting thing that we do is the stuff off the track. And uh, talking to kids, talking to also talking to their parents to, so that we can support the parents to support their kids' interests and uh, intellectual curiosity. And to realize that these um, interests can lead to careers and why, whether it's a skills-based career or anything sort of in this vein, is something that leads to something that can, is going to carry with you for life. So it could just be a hobby like I started out watching on TV, or it could be the way that you, you know, what, how you go to work every day and how you keep a roof over your head. But these are very real things. And that's what we want to do with the team is inspire people to see in a very visual way that this is a team that works very hard together, men and women working together, being competitive. The thing about a race team is you have to be pretty good because if, uh, you know, if you're not good, you're going to be at the back of the the back of the line pretty quickly, and you might get bumped up. So you're always striving to do better, and you're striving to work hard together to to uh, to win the race. And that's kind of the the I think although that's what we're doing every day, I think it's also a really nice example for other people to see. I think your experiences clearly give you unique insight on uh, some of the topics we're talking about today. I mean, you've been involved in racing, you've been on the business side of racing, you're an innovator, leader, a mentor, an entrepreneur, all of these things. And I wondered if you had advice for, uh, for women or maybe girls who are interested in pursuing careers in STEM or perhaps even careers in racing. Absolutely. I'd say the most important thing is to ask questions um, and Work on building your network, even as a young young person, you know, you meet people, whether even your first part time job in school, you get to meet people and it's good to kind of keep up those relationships because you never know when you might need to lean on somebody for help. So I always say it's good to, to maintain and cultivate your network and also be a good member of a network. So if somebody reaches out to you and asks for help, make sure that you're also ready, willing and able to help uh, people that you know when, when they need advice or an uh, introduction to somebody that you might know. And, and all of that stuff does definitely, um, does definitely help. But I'd say the most important thing is to know that um, it's, there is a wonderful path ahead of you if you follow something that you're very passionate about 
And you can, as I say, ask questions. You can find people to mentor you and find people that are going to be generous with their time and are going to want to help you. And if you ask somebody and they say no, ask the next person, you know, and, and don't give up. I mean, a lot of a lot of life is not giving up. And I certainly, I mean, a much longer story for another day, but this team did not happen overnight. It, um, this in, entire endeavor was at least seven years uh, leading up to what you saw this year and, and where we're, and I'm still working hard and digging in. And, you know, it's, it's not like, um, you know, it's, perseverance is key to getting anywhere. And uh, if you have that skill and you have confidence in yourself, you should, you shouldn't be afraid to have confidence in yourself, but um, sometimes the idea of not giving up is going to get you further than, you know, than the competition. Well, that's terrific. Uh, thank you, Beth, for, for joining us today and for sharing the work that you've done in motorsports and, and the efforts you're doing to inspire and empower girls and uh, women who are following STEM and racing careers. And uh, thank you to those of you in the audience, too, who have joined us today. Uh, we hope you're celebrating Women's History Month this month, and we invite you to join us either in person at the Henry Ford's campus in Dearborn, Michigan, or online at our website at thehenryford.org or thf.org. Uh, there you can learn about uh, other leaders, innovators, inventors, and entrepreneurs who inspire us every day.